Hi everyone, a very warm welcome to Life, Loss and Hope. Please continue to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Today I'm going to be talking about finding meaning and purpose. Most of you may have some familiarity with the five common stages of grief, being denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance that were established by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross during her work with the dying. Later, both Elizabeth and David Kessler adapted the stages to account for the similar ones that they observed in the grieving. So let's just go through those. Firstly, denial being the shock, the numbness, the disbelief, and often that anaesthetized feeling of being suspended in a surreal world. Secondly, anger, anger about what has happened, that the person we love is no longer here, anger with ourselves or others, and this can manifest in direct anger or extreme irritability, being short-fused, intolerant, or even diffuse anger, just being mad at everyone and everything. Thirdly, we have bargaining, meaning all the ruminations on questions, the what-ifs, the if-only, the regrets, the guilt, and the blame. Fourthly, depression, deep sadness, despair, missing, yearning, and longing for our loved one. And the fifth stage, acceptance. This doesn't mean that the grieving process is over or that you feel okay about the loss, but what it does mean is that you are acknowledging the reality of what has happened and the forever aspect of grief becomes an integral part of our life. There is nothing easy about this fifth stage. It can be very painful and it demands courage to allow the grief to transform itself into something else something perhaps even more productive. The stages have often been perceived as a linear line with a beginning and an end that we move along in a neat progression. But the stages were never intended to be that prescriptive, but rather generally descriptive of the process of grieving. If you are grieving, you will recognize some of these stages unfolding and also the visiting and revisiting of emotions within each stage. I have experienced these too, and I prefer to see them in a series of concentric circles, where at the epicenter, you have the intensity of the pain, emotionally and physically, in that small circle, and it's all consuming. But as you move around through the circles and they become slightly bigger, you can still hit the same stage or emotion that you felt before, but there may be more time and space and even less intensity in those emotions. Today, I want to talk about the sixth stage of grief that has emerged from the work of David Kessler, and it's called Finding Meaning, and is one that I am curiously exploring. The idea of finding meaning and purpose again in life after a devastating loss may feel initially impossible, perhaps out of reach, disrespectful, or even dismissive of the impact of our loved one's death. But firstly, let's be very clear. Finding meaning or purpose in grief doesn't mean that there is any meaning or purpose in the actual death. That would be a truly terrible thing to suggest. Finding meaning is about our life, our future, and what we do with our life going forward. It is about seeking purpose for the rest of your life, meaning that will honor your loved one and transform some of the painful experience into something rich and even fulfilling. I've always been inspired by a lady called Corrie Ten Boone, who was a survivor of the concentration camp at Ravensbrück in World War II. She was a lady well-versed with pain and suffering, and while she was in the concentration camp, her beloved sister, Betsy, was killed. And years later, when Corrie came face to face with the German officer who sanctioned her death, with the grace of God, she was able, somehow, to forgive him and shake his hand. The purpose and good that came out of her tragedy was that she traveled and spoke to worldwide audiences, bringing a life-changing message of faith, hope, forgiveness, overcoming, and love. There are all sorts of people who have suffered terrible losses and yet eventually embark on finding a pathway to see meaning and a new direction in their life. Grief is extremely powerful and can wound deeply. 
and so easily it can paralyze us to get stuck in the chronic pain, bitterness, anger, depression and guilt. However, finding meaning can help get us unstuck and help us to start to move for forward. So what does meaning look like? Well, it can take many shapes and forms. For some, it becomes raising funds for a charity related to their loved one's illness or the death, or setting up or volunteering at support groups, could be working in a charity shop, writing a book. There are many things that we can do to get involved and become focused upon. After my mum died from a brain tumour, I decided to raise money for cancer research and I ran the London Marathon. It was really amazing to be part of that sea of humanity, all the people who were raising money for causes dear to their hearts, usually from the face of tragic illness or death of a close friend or family. It was truly inspiring. Later, after pregnancy losses, I became involved in raising funds for a local children's hospice and then for a childhood leukaemia charity after a close friend's daughter died, only age seven. In total, nine marathons and £12,000 later were the threads of meaning from my own personal losses. And running for me was a lifesaver and that was my way of moving through grief. The search for meaning will be as unique as your own personality, giftings and your grief and loss. Closer to home, the Susie Lamplew Trust was set up by her family following the disappearance of their young daughter Susie, who was an estate agent and a lone worker. She went to meet a client and she never returned. The Trust's mission is to reduce violence and aggression through their campaigns, education and has pioneered personal safety for lone workers and has set pivotal changes in legislation and practice nationally. And whilst most of us are not going to act on such a large scale, don't let that be an obstacle to finding your own small meaning, even in the infancy of your thoughts and questions, where you may ask yourself, where do I find meaning? Meaning in the loss, the death, the life of my loved one, or in my own life going forward? Maybe your meaning will come by creating something that commemorates your loved one's life. Only yesterday, a close friend told her story to me. She was heartbroken when her husband, Marty, died. And a year after his death, she donated money to build a kitchen in a slum area of Uganda to provide food for local children. And it seemed appropriate to her to, as a tribute to her husband, as he'd worked in the grocery industry. She told me 15 years later, Marty's kitchen is still providing 300 meals a day and that not only keeps his memory alive, but all the children and, and staff of that community. Your search may lead you to explore a deeper sense of relationship with the people around you and make stronger connections with those that you love. You may discover a new heightened sense of faith, a desire to travel or take up a new hobby, or even an increased gratitude for the beauty of nature that we're all so privileged to see on this earth. Ultimately, meaning evolves from the search to discover ways to sustain your love for the person who has died whilst you are moving forward with the remainder of your life. What we learn through loss is that life is fragile, precious and there's never enough. So we must now attempt to value it, live it to the fullest and in this way, we can best honour those who we grieve. I know none of this is easy, and it's important to remember that finding meaning is deeply personal and relative. It can't be rushed or forced. It takes time, maybe even years after your loss. And your meaning will be as unique as your loved one. And it will never, even when you find it, be worth the cost of what you have lost. Meaning will never replace your loved one. My friend told me yesterday she'd rather have her husband back any day. But Marty's kitchen brings life for others and brings honour to his name. Please remember that your loss is not a lesson, a test, a blessing or even a punishment. Life brings the duality of birth and death. 
we can't have one without the other. And loss is sadly part of what happens in life. But purpose we can create intentionally. Going back to the earlier story of Corrie ten Boon, who turned the tragic death of her sister into her purposeful, lifelong work. At the end of her talks, she would hold up the messy underside of a blue cloth with hundreds of tangled threads, knots and loose ends. Many watching wondered if she'd made a mistake. The underside of the tapestry looked chaotic and certainly, if it was me, I'd be tempted to pull out the ugly knots, the dark threads, and to tidy it up. However, when she turned it triumphantly over, it revealed an extravagant, perfect embroidered crown, symbolizing the crown of life. The whole picture of her life became clear and it made sense. I spoke on this at the hospice chapel service as I contemplated my own life tapestry and all the different threads that had been woven in to create the purpose of my life. Many of the threads in my picture I certainly would not have chosen, threads of death, grief and loss, and yet without them I wouldn't have found a new pathway as a career working as a hospice chaplain and then later in bereavement support and even in these videos all the threads make up the picture and have their own place. Grief is an unchangeable situation and perhaps when we are faced with an unchangeable situation, the only thing we can do is to change ourselves. Undoubtedly, we have to look long and hard to discover purpose after loss and it's vital to share the journey with others who can encourage you in my life, meaning came as I pressed in from a very broken place. I have been privileged in my work to see others transform their shattered lives into purposeful ones. At some point, we will all face that dark night of the soul and be broken in some way. But what matters is how we get up, put the pieces back together again and determine to live meaningfully. Our worst moments can be the seeds that transform us. And for me, my greatest purpose has come out of my greatest pain. One of my favorite Bible verses is in the book of Romans 8, verse 28. And it says this, and we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and are called according to his purpose. This doesn't mean that all things are good or that we should dismiss our pain and suffering. But what it does say is that it powerfully encourages us with faithful reassurance that somehow God will redeem and make something good out of our bad situations. Thank you for joining us today and I look forward to sharing next time.